Hey there, how you doing, YouTubers? It is Don and Dave from True Cable coming back at you again. Uh, this time we're going to talk about wiring up your patch panel and your server rack and, and making it all organized and tidy. Just to get this out of the way first, I'm sure people will have questions. Normally you would have solid copper permanent structure cable coming in from the top or maybe from the back. You'd have a service loop here, which these two hooks are for. And then the solid copper permanent links would be coming into these keystone jacks and terminating. Now we skipped over that step just for clarity reasons because that would make this video go too long. So what we're going to do is actually talk more about just making things tidy at the actual patch panel and to your switches. And that's something that, I mean, have you ever seen a really bad spaghetti mess? I mean, with the Ethernet cable, just go into your Google browser and type in server room mess or rack disaster or something like that. And you're going to see some really bad examples of wiring that have occurred out there. So it's important to keep your installation tidy and neat. Not only does that actually improve performance, but it also helps you organize what's going on at the rack so you understand what you're, what's going on. So if anybody comes behind you, they're going to understand what's going on at the rack as well. So the, the, the more organized you keep it, the better it's going to look, the more professional it looks, the better performance you're going to get, and anybody coming unfortunate enough to come after you will actually understand what's going on. All right, so if you're like many people, you've bought a bunch of patch cords in different lengths, you know that you need to wire up your patch panel to your switch, and you bought different lengths to accommodate for the different distances. Well, that's the first step. Uh, the second step is you're gonna want to have a patch panel cord manager. And so that's one of these. Now, if you were to plug in like a three-footer here, it's like I'm most you great. You got a bunch of excess hanging off. So Dave, my uh, excellent assistant here, is going to demonstrate actually threading this guy into the patch manager and how to make this more organized. And that way, if you do have to buy an over patch cord, you can hide it. For example, there is a three-footer. And now we've got a one-footer. All right, so once you see that, you know, once you've got all your cords plugged in, you're going to be able to tuck them down this way, tuck them back this way, organize them, you know, uh, either left or right, and then you'll be able to plug them into your switch, have them all even here, and then you'll put the cover back on. Just like so. Well, not exactly like so. Not exactly. Sometimes, yeah, these plastic uh, managers, sometimes they do that. Uh, so there you go. Now you, uh, you originally started with something that looked a lot like that and we ended up with something that looks a lot more organized and professional like this so this is how you improve performance this is how you keep things neat tidy organized and manageable for you and so we suggest this is how you go about it and by the way always like i recommended skip two rack units between the path panel and the switch two rack units is ideal that way you have enough room you're going to find out that a like a small one u uh patch manager or patch cord manager is not enough room especially for 24 connections so that's pretty much it anything you wish to add well just a little uh, i've had some experience with this and some people used to tell me that if you had a messy rack just add more velcro just keep bundling it and bundling it and bundling it until it looks neat and it kind of works uh unfortunately this is meant to be a, a cross connect system or you pull cables out and put them into a different uh, location when necessary. And if you Velcro your wires up, your, I'm sorry, your patch cords up, you have to unbundle them every time you want to cross connect something. So uh, this is the way to go. Make sure when you spec out your rack that you're also specking out plenty of space and cable managers. Yeah, a lot of people when they buy like a rack unit, you know, they're going for just like a small for you. A 4U is really only usable uh, for two pieces of actual equipment and then a patch cord manager. So if you had a shielded installation and you needed to add a rack bus bar to that, well, there's no such thing. I've not seen a 5U rack, so you'd go to a 6U rack. So you'd have the, the, the rack bus bar, copper bus bar. You would skip a U with a blank filler. You'd have your patch panel, and then you'd have your 2U space for your patch cords, and then you'd have your switch. So you always want to skip to, to wire to. And the, the, probably the best advice I can impart is always buy a somewhat bigger 
rack than you thought you needed because it always ends up that you add something or you need more room and you didn't expect it. So of course, you know, something like this can be on, on a bigger scale, like in an actual telecommunications room. Look at this. What we have in here is a telecommunications room and a seven foot tall server rack. We have a uh, patch panel going into a D ring organizer and then down into a patch manager. And so that essentially is the two use. And then the cords are plugged into a switch. And above that though, if this was a shielded cable situation or if you needed a rack bus bar, you can see where that went. All right, well, there you go. So now you're seeing a, a simple installation that you might find in your home or small business or maybe something more elaborate and something more elaborate where you might need vertical uh, D-rings in order to organize your cables vertically and then into a uh, patch manager. So that's, that's an example, a uh, professional example of a telecommunications room that you don't typically find in a house, but hopefully you found that uh, additional footage useful for you. So with that, I'm going to say, please uh, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down as you see fit. Uh, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment below, you know, what are some of the tips and tricks that you've come up with to wire patch panels and, and wire your server rack? Please impart your experience. Let's get a discussion going around it. And with that, I'm going to say you have a great day. Happy networking. Well, thank you very much for watching the content. Oh, and by the way, are you considering just using any indoor cable outside? Don't do that. Please check out this video here about outdoor cable.